Hey everybody, well, everybody, welcome back to the channel. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Hope you're doing well as we continue on in Hot Rats, Frank Zappa. We're going to move on from Wooly the Pimp with its long psychedelic extended guitar solo that just mwah, feels so good. We're going to move on into the next track, Son of Mr. Green Jeans. Also, as I was pulling up uh, the lyrics for the, for the album, uh, I did see that apparently Wooly the Pimp is the only track with the lyrics, so the rest of it should be instrumental. Uh, so I don't believe I have to worry about looking at lyrics anymore from here on. So let's just enjoy the music as it comes. Hopefully you enjoy uh, everything as you, I almost said, like as you're here. Uh, Son of Mr. Green Jeans. Let's go. We have to talk, right? Obviously. Um, <laughs> I know that Hot Rats is one of those critically acclaimed albums. I know that. I do know that for a fact. And of course, as we listen to it here on the channel, and from my personal understanding, I begin to slowly understand why. I don't know for sure, so let's just take this as, you know, my limited knowledge. I feel like Hot Rats, maybe some of the albums before from Zappa, I don't know. I don't know all his discography. But I feel like this is one of those redefinitions of music. In the sense of, yeah, we're playing jazz, but we're playing a bit of a, a redefined jazz. For example, the way that we're listening to Bitches Brew from Miles Davis. When I heard that, that sounded like a complete redefinition of what jazz is and what it could be. To me, this feels somewhat on the same level. Of course, the rock and roll influence, the blues influence, the avant-garde influence, you know, sparse here, but much more later to come. I feel like this is once again a redefinition in a certain genre here within jazz. Uh, you, I guess in a sense you could even say within other forms of music, but that's what I'm feeling mostly here. Um, what an incredible jam from everyone involved. Uh, is it? Is it? Yeah, Max Bennett is going to be playing bass here. Did you hear like his his stunning playing here? Like I, I can't even say. Yeah, it's pocketed, but he is just flaring up. Uh, like a bad ache. <laughs> His bass playing, I would love to hear it isolated in this track because there's so much flavor in there. There's so much room for rhythm and bounce and glorious melodies. The way he's playing in here is just, honestly, it was it was just as much a joy to listen to Zappa, of course, who's just doing his thing, uh, as it was to listen, listen to Bennett because he was just, for lack of a better word, killing it. Of course, the drums, once again, are just fantastic here. Um, at first, I thought you had saxophone that came in a little bit in, but I don't believe so because I don't see that credited here. The only thing I can think of would be Ian Underwood, who's perhaps playing uh, clarinet. Oh, no, it does say actually, actually saxes. Never mind. Okay. Forget kind of what I just said. Speaking of Ian, however, who's also handling the keyboard work in here, in the beginning, in the first half of the track, he's kind of very, very much in the back of the room amongst the playing. Which is fine. It's more of like a, a little bit, a, a little like piano chords kind of sparsely decorating the back of the room, you know, the back wall. It's fine. It's not until later on uh, that we really hear him come up. It sounds like the organ, especially because there's a certain kind of like deep bass note, I'm assuming, from the bass pedal on the organ that's played twice in there. Um, just a great, great feeling because you can really feel that reverberate in the room sonically with the music. It kind of reminds me of, of course, the uh, bass pedals from Fourth of Fifth, Mike Rutherford. Uh, just that. It, it's just one of those moments that makes the whole room shake here, makes my headphones shake, make my rib cage shake. <laughs> it, it just is a very satisfying thing to use, especially in little climactic moments like this. I also mentioned during the music the composition of it all is is something to be i think commended for lack of a better word because the way that the band plays certain motifs plays certain chords in a sense of chorus then kind of go off and do their thing and then they return to it without even like hinting that they were returning to it is, is just so subtly and wonderfully done i think that that is uh, really really well executed because as i'm listening i'm like okay this is a really nice jam we've heard this this pattern before and then before you know it they slowly turn the gears and shift back into like 
a returning chorus and you're like, oh, I remember this. It's, it's like a nice callback, a little bit of nostalgic hit, you know? <laughs> it's just really cool the way they do that. Uh, so I really enjoyed that. This is um, a stunning track. And of course, I, I, I did mention before, but the drumming, once again, is, is really fantastic. On this particular track, you have Paul Humphrey, who's playing the drums. He was an American jazz and R&B drummer. It seems that he's played with, uh, let's see, the Four Tops. He's played, of course, with uh, with Frank Zappa, Quincy Jones, uh, quite a few people, a lot of people, actually. I'm, I'm just looking through to see if there's any other names I recognize. Um, Marvin Gaye, okay. I guess he played on Let's Get It On. That's, that's good. Carol Kay, all right. Etta James, he's played with a lot of people. Wes Montgomery, ah. Uh... Jean-Luc Ponce, he's played with a lot of people, but what fantastic drumming that was. T-Rex, wow, quite uh, quite the, the, the lineup there with people he's played with. That's fantastic. But this was just a great track the whole way through. I feel like I have to sneeze. <laughs> I just felt like I have to sneeze. Okay, it's gone. Um, I think that's all I had to say about it. Yeah, really, really wonderful stuff here. Uh, I don't know if this is one of those albums that has redefined uh, a genre, or at least progressed it, furthered its intentions and its limits, expanded them, but it sure feels like it listening to it. Anyways, really, really good. Let me know what you guys thought of the track. You can let me know in the comments down below. You can follow me on Twitter. You can support the channel on Patreon. Thank you so much for being here. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you, and you, maybe even you, tomorrow. <laughs> Bye, guys.